So welcome back to Orchid House. I'm Olivier in Fort Lauderdale and today rather than talking about orchids proper I want to talk about some basic tools that are very useful for you to have handy. And I also want to stress maybe I have here a dedicated uh, setup for my orchids. This It's only used for that purpose. And I think it's useful because uh, successful orchid growing requires constant observation and then when you observe you will discover issues there might be a pest infestation you might have a disease issue and uh, that requires immediate intervention so procrastination is not good policy when it comes to orchids so if it's all available right there uh, within reach i mean you psychologically you're probably going to be more likely to take care of it right away so what is all that stuff that i have here handy uh, so I have these shears here to make cuts, uh, cut off spent blooms, uh, dead bulbs or whatever you name it. Uh, diseases that I spot. First of all, as soon as I make a cut, I need to disinfect my tool and I use a map gas torch. That's on, okay, so usually five seconds will do if you're trying to kill insects. If it's a disease, maybe 15 seconds. This is super hot, so that's going to take care of the problem. Just have to be careful. It's a little hot for uh, like a minute, so you set it aside. Uh, I mount a lot of my orchids uh, and I use the Velcro to secure them to the mount. I've shown you that on previous videos. There's a million ways to do this. I just happen to favor this one. Because I think Velcro is very flexible, doesn't hurt your plants. And at the same time, you can really tighten it uh, real strongly. So it does a great job. So I, I like this a lot. If you have, so this is a little thick, you may have a small plant or something that you want, uh, you find this too unsightly. So you can cut this in two. This is an example. I cut the, the strip in two and now you have two. A uh, little, uh, let me show you, it's very easy. So down the middle, and that big band turns into two small bands. So that can be useful too for smaller plants. Uh, I have these stakes here, all sorts of shapes, of not shapes but sizes. And I have, whoops, I have thicker ones, the jumbo size thinner ones. These are very useful to stake, especially my catacetums, which are very top heavy. And also when repotted, sometimes they are a little unsteady. So that helps quite a bit. So that's all ready and available to use. I use gloves all the time. It's a matter of hygiene. If I don't have, I don't wear a glove and I, I'm in contact with a, a leaf that I cons consider suspicious, I'm going to uh, disinfect my hands real quick. Quick job. Uh, what else do we have? I have these clips, different sizes, uh, again to secure a new growth or a new spike uh, with one of these. I show you the bamboo uh, stakes, but I have plastic ones, again, all, all, all sizes. Uh, these baskets here. That's something that I buy on Amazon. They are very cheap. Don't remember. G you get 100 at a time. And they are useful because there again you have other ways to do that. But I think this is very practical. Uh, you put, this is it. Uh, this is just one example. But slow release fertilizers. Whenever uh, they get moist, they release a little bit of fertilizer. And that's good for six months. That on top of regular fertilizing that I, that I do weekly. So those are great. I have zip ties. The zip ties also need to resupply here. <laughs> Running low. Uh, but I use them. Let me show you. The, uh, I have a little bit of these guys. You close it, but then this opens very easily. So to avoid it, I just secure it with the zip tie and uh, yeah, there you go. So now the lid is firmly 
closed and then you put this in your medium and you're good to go. Uh, so whenever you make a cut, uh, you should disinfect your cut. I mean, uh, hydrogen peroxide, 3% pure, is great to avoid bacterial uh, diseases and all sorts of problems. Uh, on top of that, first I, I spray this on the wound and then also a bit of ground cinnamon. Uh, ground cinnamon is actually a great fun uh, fungicide. So this is the regular stuff you buy uh, to bake your cakes <laughs> at the grocery store. It's cheap and easy. Uh, to combat pests, I use uh, isopropyl alcohol uh, that I spray pure again on the leaves uh, this is this kills the bugs on contact uh, uh, do not spray this on buds or flowers they're gonna die instantly but i mean it does a good job for instance for mites on my uh, calasium leaves uh what else do we have uh yeah fertilizers so regular fertilizing i alternate between different types this is the standard 20 20 20 I have uh, calcium magnesium fertilizer 15 515 I have this I don't really know if it works uh, it's supposed to be a uh, bloom booster I use it seldom but sometimes uh, why not I mean it's part of the arsenal uh, I had something else I don't find it here the kelp max I forgot to take it out so kelp max is uh, seaweed that's kind of a supplement it's not really a fertilizer but it's very useful and then uh, on not only for the fertilizers but also for uh, your pesticides and fungicides and the miticides you have the measuring cups because they all have different dilution rates and now uh, this is both uh, imperial and metric system one teaspoon equals five milliliters then one tablespoon is 15 milliliters and it's just a reminder that you have three teaspoons in one tablespoon we tend to forget that. Uh, what else do we have? Yeah, so I have a bunch of spare uh, wood mounts since I like mounting. They're readily available. I have a bunch of different size of pots, clay pots, plastic pots, some supplies there. Uh, I always have thing and moss that comes from a bigger bale, and I uh, put some here that's readily available. I moisten it here. I need to make a video on these guys so I have a video where I stress the importance of strong rain showers that your, your uh, bulbs plump up uh, and uh, well I mean we have stretches of very dry weather here and uh, so for instance some of my stanopias I really like because I, I let them approach dryness so they get dry but then I really uh, want them to have a good soaking and they soak overnight and uh, so they, it's like having a 10 hour long shower they have different pot sizes uh, different containers to that effect uh, yeah more stuff here uh, hangers for baskets readily available uh, a basket waste basket all the, the the dead leaves and all the stuff rather than having to go so again it, it, the, the purpose is to be practical everything is readily available and I think that that really helps then before I let you go, I just want to show you this gorgeous lady that opened yesterday. <coughs> this plant blooms for the first time and it's a Cattleya emptistoglossa, which I think is one of the most beautiful Cattleyas and also one of the most beautiful orchids, period. And there's so many different uh, varieties, I mean, uh, uh, with the line breeding. So this one is variety Cerulea. Liza crossed with Atalaya comes from Brazil. Uh, Floralia and Stephen Champlain is the gentleman who sells them. It has outstanding stuff, so much variety and great quality. So they go through bare rooting, through shipping, and yet, I mean, uh, they, they get acclimatized quite easily. And uh, so, I mean, this is really beautiful. So that's it for today. I just wanted to show you some practical tips. Uh, I will see you next time. Thank you very much for tuning in and bye-bye.